Private Lender Podcast, Episode 63. The Private Lender Podcast quote of the day comes to us from Thomas A. Edison, who said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. It's a brave new world out there, y'all. Welcome to the Private Lender Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to helping educate investors about the value of private mortgage lending and note investing. My goal is to help private lenders keep their money safe while building wealth with old world pragmatism and without banks or Wall Street. So if you're looking for a way to learn how to build wealth by utilizing time-tested methods in this ever-changing digital world, my friend, you are in the right place. My name is Keith Baker, and you're listening to episode number 63. So I just want to take a moment and welcome you, and also thank you for sharing your time with me today. For today, I will attempt to answer a question that I hear a lot in the RIA or Real Estate Investment Association meetings in the community, and yet hearing it in the flesh and then seeing things online, to me, there's a, some confusion there, and that is the simple question of what is the difference between hard money and private money? And you can start with things like the difference in the terms. So both hard money and private money can be very, very short term. In fact, most hard money loans are short term, six to 12 months. However, the difference with private money is I have some loans that are out three years. There are some lenders who will provide landlords a 10 to 15 year loan at a relatively reasonable interest rate, you know, five, six percent, and they're completely comfortable with it. That wouldn't be me, just to let anybody out there, you know, if you're wondering, just to let you know. However, the real difference for me comes down to intent. And it's not the intent of the loan or the intent of the property, the transaction. It's the intent of the individual. For me, a private money lender or a private mortgage investor or note investor is someone who is typically not in the business of making loans. Okay, so it's not Wells Fargo or Quicken Loans or name your mortgage company or big bank, those companies are in the business of making loans and deriving their profits from the interest rates and the points charged. A hard money lender, like the banks or mortgage companies, a hard money lender is in the business of making loans and deriving business income off of those loans. The difference being a hard money lender will typically go to someone like myself or you who wants to be a private lender and borrow at, say, 8 or 9%, turn around and then loan that money out to an investor at a much higher interest rate, and they get the points most of the time. Some hard money lenders will pay the first lender much more, you know, 10%, 11%. However, they're, when they loan it out to the investor, they're pulling off points and possibly the difference in between that interest. That's a business. That's just not what I do. It's not what I talk about. Private money lending, private mortgages, that is in and of itself the biggest difference for me. And that's when people ask me the question, that's what I like to start off. Because if you go online, I see these private lender association. And what it is, is it's businesses that loan money to other businesses, which, okay, in a way, that's what our private lender does. However, these people have offices and staff, and it's their job to look for financing for real estate deals, or perhaps they can make loans for inventory or accounts receivable. Different thing than, you know, giving somebody like my partner land and some money to buy a house and wrap it and sell it. So intent is the biggest thing, which I should probably should have kept for last, but I think it makes the most sense if you look at it from that aspect to begin with. Obviously, then, you know, I said at first you can look at the terms, but then the the terms, most hard money lenders aren't going to be as flexible as a private money lender. So any hard money lender, and I tell this to private lenders, is always get some type of monthly payment. That way you have a mechanism for foreclosure. So don't do a 12-month loan with no payments due until the end of that 12 months. And then guess what? At the end of 12 months, that house is sitting there and you could have done something and foreclosed on it, but you can't for a year because you have no trigger 
for default at that point. So a hard money lender would never do that. I would suggest private money lenders never do that. But things are much more flexible on the private money side because so many more things are open to negotiation. For example, the collateral. I have loaned money against property A so that the investor could go take care of property B. And a lot of banks and hard money lenders will do that as well in the collateralization. However, I've also known some people to collateralize boats, RVs, it basically anything that has a title and can be repossessed. Or, you know, in extreme cases, if somebody, you know, has like, I have known of extreme cases where somebody has placed a very, very valuable piece of family jewelry in escrow, so to speak, with at an attorney's office for collateral. I guess that'd be okay. I mean, if that makes me whole, if things go south, as a private lender, I think about that kind of thing. I mean, these are just some examples of the way you can get creative with collateral. You can go back and listen to episode number 59 with Nomi Ya, and when she talks about hypothecation and how she wants to construct her deals and her notes for cash flow. Also, Tom Barry touched on that in episode 43 briefly. I believe it was fractionalizing the loan. So obviously, you can do some pretty creative things. You have a lot more flexibility as a private lender. Unfortunately, that also means that people can pull the heartstrings, a private lender, I think, sometimes a little more because it's not a business where you know a hard money lender can look at a desperate investor in the eye and tell them, I'm sorry, this deal doesn't make sense. And when that investor says, look, if I don't do this, I go out of business or I have to go back and get another job or you know whatever. A hard money lender is a business woman or a businessman. They're going to look that investor in the eye and say, sorry, this doesn't fit the criteria. And to me, that is one of the few flaws and differences, I'd say, that private lending does have. If you're a softy, a pussycat, oh, that's okay. Private lending is not going to be for you. If you're willing to hold people to a contract, and look, you can be a little generous here and there. You can always waive late fees if it's a little late. There are mechanisms you can show mercy as a private lender. And I think you'll see that more and more with private lenders above, say, hard money, because hard money is business. I myself am trying to, as I go through this journey, meld those two things together to be the Republican and the Democrat. To do, What was uh, the George Bush said, you know, the compassionate conservative. <laughs> but I want to help people build neighborhoods. I do want you know responsible investing. I once had a professor that didn't like his pension went was tied up in Raytheon. It was a defense contractor. He didn't like that one of his money out. You know, he fully admitted he, he loved the return, but he didn't like the fact that his money was with the defense contractor. And I can respect that. And so with the real estate investing, the private lending, you can have the element of conscientious lending, giving people chances, so on and so forth. It's not all cut and dry, but I would highly recommend you start your foundation very cut and dry so that when the lines get blurred and you go from the black and white into the gray a little bit, at least you have some type of good footing and a good foundation from which all of your decisions are made. So that's why I'd say let's take it real conservative in the beginning because you can always loosen up a bit. You know, and especially once you get going, you can start with the rates, for example. That's a number three difference. Private lenders have this wonderful little area that we can sit in between what the banks are charging and what hard money is charging. So the banks take as the best price. If you look at money, it's how much does it cost? And that is, you know, out of pocket interest rates, points, time, processing the application, all that stuff. Banks are traditionally lower. Like right now, you can get a 30 year investment mortgage, 20% down between four and a half to 5%, depending on what part of the country you're in. I'm just going to using some bank rate stuff here. You can get a 15 year investor loan, 20% down. And you get closer to four or just under four percent in the rates, whereas hard money is traditionally twelve, fifteen, or in some cases eighteen percent. Just depends on the, the usury laws of whatever state that you're in. Texas here, it's eighteen. That includes points and interest rates. So I have seen loans go out with three points and fifteen percent interest, or two points and sixteen percent interest. I've also seen one that was five points of interest and a ten percent interest rate monthly or annualized. Anyway, not amortizing, interest only. But we as private lenders live in that sweet spot in between what the banks charge, not only just on the numbers, points and interest and the hard money, because that leads to the question, okay, this is all well and good, but some of you may or may not remember, but if you're listening to this podcast, you're either my age or older. So that means you remember the 1980s. You remember the housing market and what happened in interest rates, you know, normal mortgages were at 10 and 13%, just regular mortgages at Freddie Fannie stuff. It got really 
really crazy with interest rates. And so that kind of begs the question, well, what's that going to do between hard money banks and private lenders? What does that mean for them? It's going to squeeze us out from a numbers perspective. So that means if we continue, we'll just have to get more and more creative because we are private. We're not businesses. We're not regulated. You know, and as long as it's our money, it's our choice. So that's what I'm actually looking forward to and fearing at the same time. I think it's going to be very interesting to see. Right now, we have this very nice sweet spot that we're in, in between banks and hard money lenders. And who knows, with blockchain coming, I mean, it could completely, and I really think it is going to radically change the landscape, but we might not be talking about banks and hard money lenders in 10, 20 years. It might just be you know, person to person, and that whole industry may go away. We don't know. It's going to be pretty cool. I hope I live long enough to see it and to be able to shift and to pivot around that when the interest rates rise. And you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, right now, usury rates are at 18%. They may go up. I would love to own a lending business in North Dakota. Simple reason is because of their usury rate is tremendously high. In fact, go look, most of your credit cards are domiciled in North Dakota. But anyway, that's beyond the point. So in recap here, the main difference between hard money and private money, number one is the intent. Is the lender in business for business or is the lender an investor? You know, someone who has a, a regular job or maybe is not a real estate investor, has an old 401k, but they're not using it to derive business income or consistent business income, but rather investing investment income. Number two, the flexibility on the terms and the collateral and what you can do as a private lender. But you don't have to answer to a board. So it's it's your call. It's your negotiation. It's you know the world is your oyster. You can write up anything as long as it's legal. That's why you have to have a lawyer. But, you know, within reason, you can negotiate that RV as collateral for a quick fix and flip. Who knows? And number three, the rates. Stay between the rates for right now, especially while we have it so good as private lenders. And let's just make sure that interest rates stay low. So that's my political message. Let's just make sure that interest rates stay low. Reasonable and necessary, but low. I think I've rambled on long enough and taken uh, enough of your commute or your morning run, but I do appreciate you listening. And I just want to tell you to stick around. I've got some really cool interviews lined up. I got some attorneys and yeah, I mean, you've heard them so far this year. And I think they're only going to get better and hopefully a little bit wilder. And always, I hope they deliver value to you. So, and if they do deliver value, please, please go to iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or wherever you're listening to this podcast on, wherever. Leave me a rating and review, please. That helps spread the word. It brings people awareness. People just like you and me who can find it a little easier. Would appreciate that greatly. Also connect with me over on social channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. LinkedIn and bigger pockets. One of these days, I'm going to get a VA and boost up my postings, and that way I can just respond to folks. I don't have to worry about coming up with the content and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway, but I do peruse those channels, and that will get amped up in 2019 significantly. So, until next time, I wish you all prosperous and happy investing in private lending. Take care. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time.